All right, so when you're creating game models and you're baking high to low poly mesh, you're going to face a number of issues when it comes to the bakes themselves. One of them happened to be skewing. Now, there's different ways you can deal with this, and I've talked a little bit about it on the channel by doing things like skew maps and substance designer, perhaps. Uh, but here inside of Marmoset, there's actually a tool for this. You go to the low poly mesh, and you set up your bake group and all that. And you'll be able to do paint off, or excuse me, paint skews, and this will pop up. And you'll get this nice crazy display here as well. You can actually just turn a show skew off and you can still paint. But you can come in here and you can start painting now and start to get rid of that, right? Pull control, you can erase a little bit there maybe. And you can see there's a very small window here to fix this, right? And so that's great, we can actually fix it this way. But we have to do that for each and every one of these now. And that's not the end of the world, you could certainly go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you some another way you can fix this. Uh, so I'm going to actually clear this, and no, none of the skew map will remain, okay? So now that we've done that, let's go back to Blender for a second. Now I've talked about optimizing low-poly meshes on the channel. You can actually change your mesh around geometry-wise and not mess up your UV maps. One of those ways happens to be doing loop cuts, and it's super useful and effective. So like here in this area, if we were to just add a couple loop cuts on this low-poly, you're going to make what's called an unoptimized low poly. Whenever you're doing baking, a lot of times it's better not to go and create the most uh, efficient mesh possible. It's better to leave it a little bit less efficient. And this will actually prevent skewing a lot of times because what's happening here is if we look at the vertex normals, when a cage is automatically generated, usually it goes out on the vertex normals, right? Well, these ones that we just created with the loop cut tend to go out straight from the surface here. And this one does as well. So anything in between should have a non-skewed um, bake, basically. So you can actually add loop cuts all over the place to fix various um, skew correct or skew issues you might have, and that includes going along in these areas as well on these vertical sections of the cylinder. But you might even be able to do that in areas like this by doing things like insets. Right? Insets won't damage the UV maps necessarily. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and take this one and we will export it as an FBX selected object only. It's a low poly. So I'm going to replace my low poly. Go back to Marmoset now. And when we get back to Marmoset, uh, it should automatically update. But if it does not, I'm going to go to Bake Project and just click Bake real quick. All right. Boom. We don't have to always hand paint things out. So. Uh, you notice that here we have a little bit of a saw pattern. It's like back and forth. You'll see this a lot on your models as well, quite a bit. And so if you ever need to fix something like that, you guessed it, you can do the same thing to fix that a lot of times. It's not going to work out as well on the actual edge here if there's a saw pattern right there. But if it's set inwards from right here, this will help correct it. So we'll export again. Place the low, go back to Marmoset, and we'll just go ahead and click Bake again. You see? Boom. So that's just one way you can fix skews without having to hand paint the skew maps every time. And um, the way that actually works, by the way, if you didn't see the other video, is that Marmoset's baking out two normal maps, one with smooth shading, one with shade auto smooth, more or less, and uh, or with a smooth cage and non-smooth cage. So... It, you're able to blend between the two. And Substance Designer, you create a skew mask, which is black and white, and it'll just basically, on all of your edges, use the smooth shaded edges, and then in the other areas, we'll use flat shading, basically, more or less, something like that anyways. So, but you can see that actually did work there on that one. Uh, I've got some other issues, bake-wise, that um, I didn't catch before. Maybe that's something I need to take a look at doing the offsets or whatever is causing that one. Yeah, so it might just be a geo or UV map issue, but uh, nonetheless, yeah, so baking and marmoset's pretty good overall, but even then, you still run into issues with it. It doesn't do the work for you. You need to understand how to bake. When you're doing certain things like cylinders, um, like these little tips here on the cylinders, these ones can be really hard to get right. And a lot of times you have to rely off a cage to fix those ones. 
Not to say you can't try adding additional loop cuts. It could be a possibility. It might make it look nicer. But I don't think it will solve your problems uh, in most cases anyways. So learning to make custom cages, you know, look into that. So something you definitely want to utilize. But if you're in a crunch and you got to go for speed, a lot of times just these additional little geo edits work out perfectly fine. I do want to mention something else, though, before we go from this video. If you can't add a loop cut because you have ingons in the way, right? Like there's an ingon here, ingon here. And I really need to loop cut this thing, right? But I can't because it's, well, in guns. So you can use the knife tool. Just press K, C, A. You can add knife cuts like this. Okay. I've already done that on this one, but you can see you can do that. Control X to quick dissolve things. It shouldn't mess up your UV either. Yeah, you can do that and it should work out fairly well for you. Other areas like this, we had an issue with the bake over here. Could be geo or something doing that but let's press l right here select by face press l select by seam this is a seam one of my islands if i was to inset this if i can't inset it there we go something like this maybe and you don't have to necessarily remove this seam it doesn't really matter unless you're going to re-unwrap it i do it just because i don't want to I see it and I unmark my edges because these were marked sharp as well. I don't want to mark sharp. So, but you can do the insets like so. Go back, bake. And we should see this area get a little bit nicer looking perhaps in here. Yeah. See, a lot of cool little stuff like that. So, you basically have to add like holding edges or border edges basically in those kinds of areas perhaps. But once again, I'm going to reiterate this. Using cages will solve virtually every baking issue you have if you set them up appropriately. Okay. And it, like technically, you still have an improper bake. Like you're doing things like um, maybe squashing normals in certain areas and doing stuff like that. But um, these additional cuts really are huge time savers and they tend to work out really well. So definitely want to try to utilize them when you can. And save yourself a bunch of headache trying to set up a cage because that's a process all on its own. But I'm definitely a lot to baking. And the more you play around with it, the better, whatever time you'll have with it anyways. So anyways, that's it for this video. Ran on a little longer than I wanted, but hope it helps. All right. See you in the next one.